Uh, this is uh, about to be a quick overview of the Chinese clone version of the Russian Malahite receiver, a small handheld SDR receiver, which uh, in its basic version of software, this is called the demo version of software, uh, the cheaper version, which you'll see for sale on eBay and uh, through Amazon. It covers 50, 50 kilohertz up to 200 megahertz continuous coverage. If you purchase the uh, official registered version of the software, which can be done by contacting the Russian maker of this, or through sometimes the supplier on eBay, the Chinese supplier, can get you the appropriate code, firmware code. Uh, the coverage is extended up to 2 gigahertz, but there's a fairly significant gap in the lower UHF range. Uh, currently, the receiver is connected to uh, a 20 meter or a multiband vertical, actually, the 20 and 40 meters. Uh, two controls on the side of it, a volume control here. And also a press button of this encoder switch uh, enables you to access some of the other parameters. I'll show you. I'll show you that in a moment. And then the uh, top top one is the frequency encoder. I've got that set at the moment on uh, quite a wide bandwidth setting, so uh, it's not as fine tuning as it could be. The minimum tuning step on this software version is 10 hertz, which is pretty good for tuning in single sideband and CW signals. I'm a CW bloke, so I tend to home in on the CW end of the band, as you can see here at the moment. There's one or two quite, there's been a Hungarian contest on up to about a couple of hours ago, and uh, we've got a few stragglers left behind and uh, a few new stations on the air as well. When I'm tuning through, it might take me a little while to do that, but I can also uh, rapidly move around the bands by touching the screen I could also but I'm not going to do it because it's a little bit fiddly on this software version I can change the tuning step you can see there's a white bar under the under the uh, the step that I'm using at the moment but I can move that along backwards and forwards by using the touch screen but uh, it's a little bit flaky, so I'm just going to leave it set so I can tune in CW stations with relative ease. Uh, along the bottom, you've got various menu settings. This is a band switch. I'll just demonstrate that. We could go to... where are we? We could go to the bottom end of 40 meters there. <coughs> Excuse me. Quite busy at this part of the band. bit of a chirpy CW signal there. The display is quite nice. You've got a panorama on the top half and a, a quite an accurate uh, coloured waterfall underneath. And uh, on the revised uh, firmware version, I do believe you can change some of the parameters, the speed at which the waterfall occurs and even on the basic version you can change the timing of the dimming of the display you'll notice it keeps dimming when I'm uh, I've left it for a few seconds and you can also uh, I, I'm, I may be wrong here but I think you might be able to change from just waterfall to panorama I'm not sure about that uh, that needs checking up I haven't used it that long so I'm not totally familiar with all the uh, the settings it, uh, the revised firmware version, which you can get and upgrade it through your PC, has CW decoding on it as well. Certainly this doesn't have that. 
what I'll do is just demonstrate quickly how I can change the filter. The filter's pretty... I've, using the encoder there, I've moved from volume to filter. You can see that I've changed the filter width by the width of the blue line on there. And of course you can hear the difference as well. And you can take that right down to, that's on 500 hertz there at the moment. I'll leave it set on a kilohertz there at the moment and go back to the volume control. You probably notice it's a very quiet receiver actually, and there is uh, a noise reduction fill a noise reduction feature. I'll bring that in. I've noticed that there's a demand on the CPU when the noise reduction's brought in. And the display tends to slow down. It works very well on single sideband. Uh, not, clearly not quite so noticeable when I'm listening to CW which is quite quiet today anyway. The background noise is pretty minimal on here. Uh, to go to the general menu settings, if I go to the audio, there is actually a variable RF gain here. And I can move that, I can move that up and down the scale once I've highlighted it. You, you can hear the gain coming up there. I usually leave it fairly low setting. The reason for that is that inevitably with very, very strong signals on a receiver like this, uh, it can be compromised. So it's just as well to keep the gain set well back. But nonetheless, you can set that where you want it and then uh, leave it there. And then to go back to the display, press the encoder there. See if we can get a few single sideband stations. And to do them justice, I'm going to open the bandwidth a bit. You'll notice the noise reduction noise reduction is uh, far more effective uh, on a single sideband station. Massive signal just been on there. I'm just getting near the edge of the uh, amateur band here and you can see here the trace of a fairly strong AM signal just off to that uh, probably about 7 point, just above 7.2 megahertz. Anyway, we'll probably leave it there for the moment. I hope that's given you an idea. Uh, 
I hope that's given you a, an, an idea, a quick overview of some of the features uh, of what is a very reasonable, it doesn't cost a lot of money to buy the, uh, the basic uh, receiver without a case, but even with a case and an, in, and an enclosed speaker with the basic demo software, uh, what you get for your money is a very, very good little sensitive receiver. And add the, uh, the latest firmware version and uh, you have a, a very, very useful and enjoyable bit of fun receiver to use in the shack. Thanks very much.